My dad broke his hip on August 30th. He went to the hospital that night in the middle of the night. Because, of course, this kind of crap always happens in the middle of the night. And after he had surgery to have little screws put in because he broke the, the neck of the femur. You know, you got the ball and then you got the, the long part of the bone and there's a little neck. He broke that. So he had screws put in it so that it stays together because it was a clean break aside from that. And so that keeps the bone from sliding apart. And he was sent to a facility called New Orange Hills. It's supposed to be a rehabilit rehabilitation facility and you know they were made aware of his advanced Parkinson's and the fact that he is total care because he is six foot five and 220 pounds my mom is five foot two and 120 pounds I'm five foot one and 80 pounds on depending on what time of the month it is but my weight swings very much in the month so it's hard to just pin it to one weight but so this facility took care of my dad from let's see September 2nd or 3rd until the very end of September and then we were promised that they would rehabilitate him until he was able to walk and then about three and a half weeks in which it takes six weeks for a, a bone to heal and we were told we probably wouldn't see him until December so the tail end of September they call us and tell us, well, we have to send him home because, you know, we can't do anything with him if he can't put weight on the leg. Me and my sister went for a video or a, a window visit where we were at a window and we would talk together on the phone, you know, to see dad. And the family before us had a guy who had broken his neck and he had the tracheostomy kind of a ventilator on. So he was completely dependent on that to breathe. He couldn't move anything below his chin. And they're not sending him home because he can't put weight on his body. You know, with my dad, while he was healing, really, he just needed to be fed and turned over sometimes in bed so that he wouldn't, you know, get bed sores and stuff. And they call that him, that he was low care. When he's someone who needs help to, to dress, to get up out of a chair, you know, ev almost everything he needs help with. But with, the, with this broken hip, he is, we are completely unable to take care of him. But three and a half weeks in they, this place, it's called New Orange Hills, and I'm naming it because they lied to us about everything. We were promised so many things that never happened. You know, we tried to get his, his um, orthopedic surgeon to fight for him, and they said, no, nope, we're not going to do it. We couldn't get his neurologist in to talk to him. It's like, my mom was like, doesn't work that way. You can't do that. You know, he's not involved in his case. And I'm like, but he knows his disabilities. And I don't know, some kind of bureaucratic bull crap. But anyway, my dad is now in my family room on an electric hospital bed. And he's got a wheelchair so that he can sit up for some parts of the day. And we usually sit him in the chair to eat. You know, and of course the person that showed mom how to help him slide into the chair was some big buff dude and not a tiny little old 75 year old lady. Okay, cause they won't let me get in there and try to help because if my dad falls on me, I'm dead, which no big loss. But the medical system has basically let us down in every possible way that we can be let down. And I just got off a video call with my counselor, Dr. F. And, you know, on top of all of this, you know, my dad and I have this history that is not a very good one. You know, there's lots of emotional abuse and manipulation and stuff that goes on that he's done to me since I was a kid. But I'm still absolutely irate, infuriated, furious, wrathful, rage, just that he has been just dumped as a disabled person because he is extremely disabled and you know when I complain about him it's not because of his disabilities it's because of the person that he is and you know and then there's the disabilities he has to deal with but you know he's someone that will kind of use his disabilities to manipulate you or at least he does it to me and mom but 
you know, he was out of the house for almost a solid month. And for that entire month, I didn't have a meltdown, not one. And I have them every day when he was home. And now that he's back, I'm having them every day again. And the day after he came home, you know, the whole day was a fluster clock. And I had four that day. Yesterday I had about 12 because just the whole day just got completely screwed over. And you know, when you're autistic, you need routine to feel like you have some kind of control of yourself. And every routine that I have got broken in some way. And so I just completely broke down every single time. And it's just, but American healthcare does not care about disabled people. When you're lower class to poor and you're disabled, the healthcare system will find every excuse possible to not give you the care you need. They just want you out of the way. So me and my mom are alone struggling with my dad. And it's destroying us. And Dr. F told me that I need to control how much energy I give to my dad, but the thing is, is that he is a black hole and he will just suck it out of me even when I'm trying to control what I give him. I try to be like Spock and just very flat effect and try not to react to things he says, but he will say things that get under my skin and it's almost like he can see what's happening inside of my brain even if I don't show it or maybe I make a micro expression that he picks up on, but he will just accuse me of being angry. And sometimes I'm not, I'm just tired or I'm exasperated, but everything is always, you're angry when it's with him. And so I'm going to have to figure out how to determine how much energy I put out towards him. And of course this happened when I was starting to have my trauma reaction for what happened to my mom last year because she went to the hospital last year. It seems like someone going to the hospital is becoming a freaking annual event in this house and I'm just still done with it. You know, and just the COVID risk makes it even scarier. Because anybody that comes in could kill us just by passing a little virus off into our air and anything could kill us now on top of everything else if my dad gets COVID he's dead if my mom gets COVID she's dead if I get it I'd probably survive it but if I do I hope I don't survive it if I catch COVID I hope I die of it because I don't want to live with the mess that comes after just saying if I get COVID if I get a serious version of it, I would rather die than be in an ICU. <laughs> because as a disabled person myself, I would just get dumped on my mom too, and I don't want to put her through that. I would rather die than put her through that. You know, and that's me speaking only for myself. This is not speaking for all autistic people or all disabled. Only me, specifically only me. If I were to get COVID, I hope I die of it. Because... I don't want to put my mom having to take care of, I don't want to put my mom through having to take care of my dad and me at the same time. She's already at her limit. You know, and I feel like if I was out of the picture, I'd be one less stressor. You know, because I've been having dreams that have just disrupted my sleep. And it's either dreams where things are happening to people and I cannot get to them to help them. Or I'm having dreams where things are happening where I can't get a clear answer of what's going on so I don't know what to do to help. Or I'm having dreams where I'm chopping off my body parts and giving them to people because I can't be everywhere at once. So it's like, just take this piece of me, take this piece of me. I feel like I'm nothing more than hands and feet to be used as a tool and not a person. And that's what American healthcare has done to this family. You know, it's destroying us. The stress is killing us. And if it turns out my dad's leg is not healing, he's going to have to get the hip completely replaced, which is going to be a complete disaster. Especially if they only keep him for a while and then do the same thing again, just kick him back home because, oh, we can't do therapy if he can't stand up. Which, how the hell do you stand up on a broken hip? I mean, I don't understand. But I have to control what kind of energy I give to people and I have to figure out how to do it because I don't know how to control that. The only thing I can do is just show no emotion at all. 
but apparently I even suck at that. But I have lost control of my own life. You know, our house is a disaster. And the only control I have is do I do I decide to eat or not or do I only eat what my mom gives me? Which I eat because I get hungry, so I can't even control that because I get hungry and then I get really angry because I get hangry. So when I'm hungry, I get angry and upset about it because I don't like to be hungry, so I can't not eat. It's only the only thing I can do is a flat effect like this, which shows no emotion, and try to keep my voice as neutral as possible. But I think people are probably hearing things in my voice that I don't, that I'm not intending to broadcast, but I'm an angry person, and this is how I hide it. But this is what American healthcare does. When you're disabled and when you're poor, it doesn't matter what race you are, but black people get it so much worse. You know, brown indigenous people of color get so much worse. You know, I still have, at least have my white privilege, but I don't think even that's doing anything. Because, of course, my dad's a white man, so... But still, when you're disabled, and if you don't have money, and there's no way for you to contribute to society, society says, well, you're nothing, so just get out of our way. But I want every disabled person who is total care right now to know that you do matter and that you are worth something and that you mean something and that the healthcare system does not value you. You need to find your own value in yourself because American healthcare is crap. And I'm watching it crap on my family and I can't imagine how many other families it's crapping on. I can't imagine how many people are just laying on their couch dying because they can't get care. And they can't even get a bed. At least we have an electric bed for him and a wheelchair to sit him in. There's some people that probably can't even get that. So at least we have that. But I'm just, I'm just so tired of people saying, well, other people have it so much worse. That's all I've ever heard my whole life. Okay, this is the worst thing I've ever seen happen in my family right now. This is the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. And I am freaking allowed to say it. Because I am tired of having my feelings dismissed. I am tired of being told, think of other people. When I feel like nobody... I feel like I am literally standing here with my hair on fire and people are just walking by drinking water, not even sparing a glance at me to flick some water on it to help it go out. You know, and everybody's saying, think of everybody else. And I'm burning away into nothing, trying to be there for everybody. You know, and I got friends that are there for me and for them, I'm so grateful. But, like, for the world in general... You know, I am tired of being me, Cindy, being told. I'm tired of me, Cindy, being told. Think of other people when that's all I ever do. But then the people don't say, well, are you okay? What's the matter? Can I help you? I never hear that except from like a couple of friends. But I'm expected to give and give and give and give and give. And I'm tired of it. So that's the energy I need to control. And I have to figure out how. But my family is in hell. This is hell. And I want out. I want Jesus to just drop down out of the sky and take us out of this. Not that not in this terms of death, but just take the problems away. You know, fix my dad's hip. You know, all these things. I just I just want God to work a miracle and throw people into our lives that can help us. That prayer is all I've got. God is all I've got because I've got nothing else. And that's where I am.